first fight ready to get underway between Michael Lee Fett from Holland and Paliu Hadlek from Thailand. There's Lee Fett, 22 year old European champion at his weight. Your referee for this match to be fought over five It's really the Dutch rounds. close season at John the moment. So Lee Fett uh, really has been putting some extra training in when perhaps one or two of his colleagues have had a chance to take things easy. But there's the tie. Paliu Hadlek held his title for four years. We expect any moment now the Ramui, the pre fight ritual, to start. It's uh, accompanied by music consisting of cymbals, drums, and Jawa flutes. Here it comes now. And every training camp in Thailand, and there are about 800 of them, have their own individual dance. And that's exactly what Paliu Hadlek is doing now. His dance symbolizes digging the grave of his opponent. It dates back to the late 16th century when Thai boxing was very much part of military training in Thailand. So there's the statistics for the world champion. 160 fights, that's staggering. He's won 129 of them with 30 knockouts. He's lost 25. And he's the world champion at the bantamweight title. Michael Lee Fat then. His girlfriend is here in the crowd in Oldham. 22 years old. He's fought 36 times and won 30 of them. He's never knocked an opponent out. He's a European champion for the bantamweight title. Away from boxing, would you believe, is a mechanical engineer. Well, it'll take precision fighting if he's going to defeat the world champion. Paliu Hadlek, who's still going through his Ramui. You can probably see he's wearing a Mong Kong, a headband, property of the teacher and considered sacred. It must be taken off, though, before the fight can begin. And Steve, Thai boxing really steeped in tradition, isn't it? very traditional what the Thai now is trying to ask for energy from the air from the earth the wind and the fire to help him in this fight to psych out his opponent and what we're trying to do is he's, he's trying to just flex himself loosen his body up as well it helps you might see around his right bicep his Kruang Ruang which often contains a good luck charm. It's a sort of uh, good luck charm, rather. It's made of string or cloth. There it is on his right bicep. And it uh, usually contains a picture of the Buddha. He can wear that during the fight. Yes, he can wear that in the fight. The Munkan comes off, but the uh, Kerrang comes, stays on, and he's useful. He, he believes in it. Let's just sit back and enjoy these pictures. is over. And in a few moments' time, Michael Leifat will fight Paliu Hadlek from Thailand for the World Junior Bantamweight title. Paliu Hadlek, no doubt glad to get all that pre-fight ritual out the way. He wants to get into his stride now. Incidentally, the referee for this first Supreme World Thai Boxing Championship final is John Blackledge. Dutchman looks very, very nervous. Who could blame him, really?
Remember, five three-minute rounds, all these Thai boxing contests. This one staged at 52 kilos. That's eight stone. And the first round underway. Accompanied by Thai music. Some solid blows raining in from uh, Michael Leifat. Then the roundhouse kicks beneath to exert themselves from Padu Hadlek. That was a tremendous kick by Leifat, wasn't it, Steve? Very good, very good. I think, I think he's trying to catch Michael Wild here. He's trying to confuse him. He's trying to hurt him from the beginning. You see Pella Hedlick's getting very close. Michael's going to have to stay that close to even live with the guy. Yeah, it was a good catch by the uh, Thai boy, Pala Henley. Very good. He's just sorting him out. Whoa, yes, very nice by Michael. Very good one, too. Now, when the two fighters are close like this, it's the knees and the elbows which rain in on your opponent. And arguably where the Thai boxer is at his most dangerous. Remember, no holding on to the ropes, that's not allowed in Thai boxing. Oh, a solid left hook comes in from Paliu Hadleg. That was a really strong punch. Gets an elbow in two. And at this stage, you begin to wonder if this is going to go the full five rounds. very close to the groin of Pali Hadlak. That, of course, is not allowed. Last 20 seconds of the first round. It's been fast and furious. on the first round my thoughts well I think Pala Hedlicks came out here to fight this came with very quickly for the first time I'm very interested to see that he's throwing these elbows you don't usually see this till about second round this guy's really trying to take the fight out of here There's Michael Lee Fat. That's his girlfriend. I wonder what she thought in that opening three minutes. Seeing her man taking quite a battering in some stages. Do you think that was a, a disappointing round for the Dutchman? No, I thought it was a very good round. This, this Dutchman's uh, come here. He's not come here to lose. That's for sure. Um, if, if you notice, they were icing uh, Michael's uh, uh, left elbow there. They were trying to uh, help him to recover. This guy has, has been kicking his arms to try and hurt him. 
and Mike is going out to try and uh, finish the job. And he's on his behind, his uh, Lee Fett. But again, he just caught off balance. What a powerful kick coming in from the world champion. Just opted out of that one at the last moment. Really, the target area when you're kicking in Thai boxing is the area just above the knee and below the waist, sort of upper thigh area. And a series of blows to that region could actually incapacitate you. Yes, a very good elbow there from Paulo Henley. He's trying to take our friend out of there beforehand. He knows Michael's taking a lot of blows to the face, but he's trying. The Dutch people I spoke to say that they'll not get Michael out of there. It's worth pointing out that three proper knockdowns in one round constitutes a knockout. It does. Yes, Gary, I'm, this, is, um, this is really some fight to start the show with. They said Paulo Hedlick was good, but this has surprised him and me. the coach of Michael Leifat shouting instructions. Of course, he can hardly make himself heard over this din. There's Michael's girlfriend. Just strikes me that the two boxers have settled down a little bit in this second round. Just uh, over 30 seconds left of round two now. Yes, I think Michael's now, he's just used a good elbow, a good left elbow there. Very, very good. We're looking at some really classic tie fights. The last 10 seconds of the round, and Lee Fats on the canvas again. He's got hold of uh, Paddy Hadlet's leg there. Oh, a tremendous round. So we've had two rounds of this World Junior Bantamweight title match. Who would you give that round to, Steve? I give it to Paula Hedlick for his work. His work was very, very good. Have you noticed that Paulo Hedlick's been, uh, if Michael throws an elbow, Paulo Hedlick throws one back for the simple reason is he's not going to be showing up in this, in front of his own people, that they can do better elbows than us. That's what they're trying to do. They're trying to take us out of the game, show us they can do everything better than we can. What do you think uh, Michael Leifat's coach, Gore Hemmers, will be saying to him now? I think he'll be selling him to uh, keep the elbows up and uh, watch for... Uh, Paolo Hedlick going underneath, because every time Michael goes upstairs, Paolo Hedlick's going underneath and taking the leg, which takes all the power out of the leg. And Skoyer's there too, the physiotherapist of Michael Lee Fett. Never fought in Oldham before, the Dutchman. And we can have a look at that knockdown now in the second round. Yeah, what, what's happening now? Michael goes upstairs, and if you watch Paulo Hedlick, he's going right underneath, a really good kick. Right at the bottom of the calf muscle, that hurts. He saw that coming the whole time, didn't he? He certainly did. He certainly he was looking for it all the time. Oh, lovely elbow there, left elbow there from Paulo Hedlick. So certainly the world champion, we feel, has taken that round with some ease. I think so. I think he's really um, he's really ahead now. Michael's got to really keep trying to break the Thai boys' rhythm. The Thai boys' rhythm, if he can break that, he's got a chance. So, John Blacklidge just uh, draws the two boxes together, and round three is underway. Leap back. 
that. Exceptionally accurate, right on the back of the car. Yeah, what Leifert was doing was trying to again show the uh, tie that he can do what, what the tie can do. In the, in the last round, if you remember, the tie took him. And uh, this time, Michael's doing it to him. strong up to now but just a slight hint that in that third round Michael Leifat was just beginning to turn it his way especially the last 30 seconds or so. Yeah, yeah. Michael's yeah, there trying to up the pace with the time, the time he's going to try and uh, steady the pace down so it can last a little bit better. But uh, Michael's doing the right thing, he should vary the pace, try to interrupt the time's yeah, rhythm as I said before. Before. That's what we need to do with this boy, it's very strong. I'd just like to uh, notice that the, the Dutch corner, the corner that are worried, if you look across, we can see, Gary, that the, the, the Thai corner are very relaxed. The Dutch corner that are worried, and that's a good sign for uh, Thais. He looks supremely confident, the world champion, doesn't he? Yes, he's there now, look, he's talking away just as normal as if he was sat on a park bench. Well, let's have a look at uh, some of the action from the third round again. Yeah, if you, if you watch Michael there, he's going straight through. Lovely punch, he would have hit Palahead like square. His head, his head would have been in the back row there. He's coming in again. Tight, lovely left elbow right on Michael's face. Well, certainly an improvement for the Dutchman in that uh, last round. Yeah, Michael uh, was looking as though that was his round, he's throwing everything. Yeah, see, there's that left leg again at uh, Crocodile. So the fourth round underway. Now, what, what, 
what is happening now as the Thais try to uh, get Michael close and knee him. This is what they're very, very good at, Thais. Very close work. This is what he's trying to do to him. Close, then elbow him as he's coming away. Well, to hold a title like this for four, year, four years, you've got to be pretty good. It was uh, four years ago that Tali Hadlek beats Deb Duang, fellow Thai, to take the World Junior Bantamweight title, and he's not going to give it up lightly. Emma's screaming to his man. Perspiration all over his face, just out of your picture at the moment. It's as if he's taking every blow in his face. Dutch coach. And the referee is drawing attention to the Dutch corner because uh, Lipa has a cut over his right eye. And that's why the referee has stopped the fight just at the moment and declares Paul Yu Hadlek the world champion once again. He hangs on to his title because of a cut to the European champion, Michael Leifert. Yeah, I'm very surprised that they're stopping that. That was the first cut. It's a bad one, though, by the look of it. It's, it's probably a right decision. A little bit of blood just uh, dripping down onto Lee Fan's stomach. And he's right in front of us in our commentary position here. And there's some concern over that cut over his uh, right eye, more or less in his eyebrow. But that's the world champion who's retained his crown, Paddy Hadley, hangs on to his world junior bantamweight title. 